Well, it's good to be back with you. Day 28. Wow, we're nearly done with our 30-day journey to natural diabetes and high blood pressure control. I'm Dr. David DeRose. <sighs> Forgiveness. It's a topic that often doesn't bring up feelings of rest and refreshing. Well, you've picked up on the pattern, haven't you already? The 28th day, it's a multiple of seven. And remember, every seventh day, we're looking at something that helps us to rest and refresh. But the subject of forgiveness, like I said, is not necessarily one that you associate with rest. But as you're mulling that over, let me share a, a study that took place some years ago. We actually featured it in our book, 30 Days to Natural Blood Pressure Control. It was a study done by Dr. Dick Tibbetts and his colleagues at Florida Hospital, and you guessed it, Florida. Tibbetts and his colleagues did something very interesting. They actually put on a forgiveness training program, eight-week program, helping people to actually learn how to forgive. What was amazing about the research is when they looked at those individuals who started the study with elevated anger expression scores, they actually found that the forgiveness training helped them lower their blood pressure. What's going on here? Well, Tibbetts' work is not unique. Others have looked at anger and forgiveness as two contrasting elements, and they've actually found similar, very similar conclusions. And in fact, those conclusions impact not only blood pressure, but you guessed it, diabetes as well. Just remember, we've talked a lot about stress hormones. Ramp those stress hormones up with anger, and you're messing up your diabetes as well as your blood pressure. Listen to how one group of researchers put it. These results, referring to things looking at forgiveness and anger, demonstrate divergent cardiovascular effects of anger and forgiveness, such that anger is associated with a more cardiotoxic, autonomic, and hemodynamic profile, whereas TF, or trait forgiveness, is associated with a more cardioprotective profile. These findings suggest that interventions aimed at decreasing anger while increasing forgiveness may be clinically relevant. Now, I know there were a lot of scientific terms there, but their point was that the autonomic nervous system, that's the unconscious nervous system, is impacted by whether we're forgiving or whether we tend to hold on to anger. Holding on to anger brings this cardiotoxic or heart-damaging profile that's associated with higher stress hormone levels, higher blood sugar, and higher blood pressure. On the other hand, they point out that forgiveness has the opposite effects, helping to protect your heart, helping to lower blood sugar, helping to lower blood pressure. Here's the point. Every one of us is faced with decisions virtually every day. Decisions, things that disappoint us, things where people behave in a way that's uh, not proper, uh, maybe it's on the roadways. Maybe it's in the line at the supermarket. Maybe it's at the workplace. And we can choose to respond as maybe the kind of knee-jerk responses, you know, the autonomic response, if you want to use that, uh, that phrase. I'm taking a little bit of liberty with it. The automatic response is what? It's usually to get angry for at least most of us. But I'm challenging you today to exercise forgiveness. Now, for some of you, that forgiveness really needs to involve someone who hurt you deeply, maybe many years ago. And one of the reasons over these 28 days that you haven't seen the kind of improvements that you would have liked to have seen have to do with you still harboring that ill will. I remember years ago having a patient who had lived through the horrors of a Nazi concentration camp. They never forgot that experience. They, they still held the, the anger and the bitterness inside. And you can say, well, that's understandable. But when I saw them as a physician, I saw that anger still undermining their health. In contrast, I remember the privilege I had of hearing 
Edith Eager speak some years ago, and then meeting Edith, later having her on my radio show. Another woman who had gone through the horrors of a Nazi concentration camp, but who had forgiven. One of the most positive people I'd ever met. Your challenge today, embrace the blood pressure lowering, blood sugar lowering properties of forgiveness. Quit holding on to that anger. And if you can't think of someone who's wrongly great, wronged you greatly in the past, really, if you can't think of someone like that, something's going to happen today or tomorrow where you're going to have an opportunity to choose to forgive. That's your challenge today and for the next few days as you continue your journey. I'm Dr. David DeRose. I'll be back with you tomorrow.